I ask unanimous consent to speak as if in morning business for up to 10 minutes. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. I rise today to recognize the great state of Nevada as we celebrate 150 years of statehood. It is a remarkable opportunity to speak on the floor of this chamber about this milestone, given the role the Congress played in the formation of the Silver State. The movement to make the Nevada Territory a state began within the territory, but the first attempt to formulate a constitution failed. Shortly after, the 38th Congress passed an enabling act for Nevada statehood. Signed by President Abraham Lincoln, on March 21, 1864, this bill made it possible for Nevada to eventually adopt a state constitution. Lincoln proclaimed Nevada a state on October, 1st, 19, no, October 31, 19, 1864. The guarantee of statehood was given to us by Abraham Lincoln, who, with our assistance, would go on to pass the 13th Amendment, win the Civil War, and heal our broken nation. Making the 150th year of Nevada statehood t takes me back um, to Carson City when I was just four years old. It was Nevada's centennial celebration. The date was October 31st, 1964. I remember being with my family, uh, sitting on the lawn, uh, listening to the Carson City Municipal Band lead the festivities at the state capitol. Now, during that same year, in 1964, Lyndon Johnson was re-elected over Barry Goldwater and would go on to declare a war on poverty. In, 18, in 1964, race riots broke out in Harlem. Across the nation, President Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 into law. The 24th Amendment to abolish the use of poll taxes was ratified. In 1964, Summer Olympics were held in Tokyo. Congress passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which ultimately escalated the increased military action in Vietnam. The James Bond film Goldfinger began its run in the United States and Bewitched premiered on television. So much has changed in these past 50 years, but the character of Nevada has not. From its first birthday to its 100th to its 150th, Nevada continues to be shaped by its people. People who are entrepreneurial, fiercely independent, and as diverse as our terrain. We are molded by the grit, hard work, and pioneering spirit of individuals determined to succeed. The list of men and women who have molded our state is long. Where some saw impossibility, a Nevada senator by the name of Newlands saw opportunity. To this day, his legacy lives on in the hay, the cattle and the very fields that were made possible by the water that he brought to this desert. Standing among our nation's great, frozen in bronze, greeting visitors to the nation's capital is another Nevadan, Sarah Winnemucca. Sarah, like many Nevadans, challenged the status quo. She refused to accept the injustices brought on her Native American brothers and sisters. So instead of fighting with, amendment, uh, with a weapon, she fought with her pen. Through her words, the plight of our fellow Americans living on reservations was heard. And of course, in Nevada, Mark Twain was born. Samuel Clemens adopted the famous pen name while covering the news for the Enterprise in Virginia City. Twain wrote eloquently about Nevada, from the rough and tumble attitude of the Wild West to the beauty of Lake Tahoe dubbing it, and I quote, surely the fairest picture that the whole earth affords. And any visitor to this pristine landscape would also agree. More recently, I think of Paul Laxalt, the former Lieutenant Governor, Governor and United States Senator for Nevada. Among other things, he was instrumental in preserving Lake Tahoe, establishing our, first, our state's first community colleges and our medical school. Or, Former Representative Barbara Vukanovich, who will be recorded in the history books, is the first woman to represent Nevada in the United States House of Representatives. This alone is a remarkable achievement, but the integrity and determination with which she fulfilled her duties makes her achievements even grander. Former Nevada State Senator Bill Raggio also comes to mind, who is a true statesman, longest serving member in the, in the history of the Nevada State Senate. These individuals have left their mark, but it's the people of Nevada who have forged the Silver State. 
During the formation of our state's constitution, Nevadans demanded that our mothers and sisters be heard. The women of Nevada were granted the voice of a vote before the 19th Amendment was ratified by our nation. We helped pioneer the vote for all. During World War II, when our brave soldiers fought for peace and prosperity, Nevadans who were not able to fight brought forth minerals like magnesium from the ground. Magnesium, harvested near the township of Henderson, was considered a miracle metal with the munitions and airport parts for which would help lead us to victory. The residents of Boulder City built the Hoover Dam, a government infrastructure project which holds back 26 million acre feet of water and was delivered early and on budget. With an expected 2,000 year lifespan, the Hoover Dam supplies clean energy to the grid, water to thirsty cities across the Southwest, and protection to downstream communities. Ever since we were born into battle to mend our broken nation, Nevadans have been willing and able. Though our population is small, our caliber is high. From all walks of life, brave Nevadans have heard and responded to the call to arms. At Naval Air Force Station in Fallon, we host the Navy's Top Gun School. The elite men and women of our armed forces who train here push the limits, compete, and set the tone for global air superiority. Welcoming tourists from across the globe, farming, mining, engineering, ranching, serving in the armed forces. These are just a few things we Nevadans do. And as our state motto goes, all of these things are done all for our country. Recent times have been tough in Nevada, but our pioneer spirit lives on. We continue to move forward. We have seen the booms, and now, more than most, we continue to feel the most in the recent bust. Like many in our great nation, Nevadans have lost homes, livelihoods, and the promise of a steady, steady paycheck, but this will not deter us. Our state is battle-born. We will continue to fill our 150-year-old promise of being willing and able to give all for our country. I'm a proud Nevadan, and as a son of an auto mechanic from Carson City, it is a privilege to stand on this Senate floor today to recognize our state's 150 years of statehood. Madam President, before I close, um, I'd like to thank Lieutenant Governor Brian Krolicki, Chair of the Nevada Sesquicentennial Commission, for the hard work he's put into recognizing this important milestone. Over the course of this year, the Commission has planned and overseen many events and activities, providing Nevadans an opportunity to reflect on where we've been and where we are going. Uh, Madam President, thank you.